Um, you're, you're trying to make sure that anything that is designed to sound uh, above and to the left is above and to the left, above and to the right is to the right. The only thing that should be inside of the listening area is the so-called voice of God or height or overhead, um, overhead or top channel. Um, if you, if you think about it, let's, uh, this no top speaker can be inside the heads of the listening area other than the voice of God. And the reason for that is if, if I put a speaker, you know, here for the left top middle, that's yeah. going to be perceived as being to the right for that guy. So you have to look at the people at the perimeter and make sure that anything to the left is to the left of that person. Anything to the right is to the right of that person. Again, to make sure that they perceive the soundtrack the way it was designed to be perceived. Um, if it's a if it's a top front channel, it the it has to be in front of you know the guys sitting in the front row. Maybe only just a little bit, but it should be in front of those guys so that they don't perceive it as coming from behind them, um, and so on. And this again leads to sort of simple exclusion areas. Like if you look down here, no top left speaker beyond this point, meaning inside of those people's heads. What if the top left speaker is like right above the guy to the left seat? Well, again, it, it's anything that is mixed to that speaker. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, you said left top. Which one are you talking about? I'm yes. Sorry. So uh, any one of these seats here. Say you wanted to do the top. Top front left speaker. What if that top front left speaker, rather than off to the wall, it's slightly above that guy in the left front seat? These are not intended to be in the wall. These are still in the ceiling. They're just a little bit wider than most people might otherwise do. Right. Um, and actually, if you look at the Dolby, since you know most soundtracks are at most, and there are fewer DTSX soundtracks, um, if you look at the Dolby recommendations, all of the left upper channels yeah. are in line with the left speaker and likewise all the right channels are in line with the right speaker right so you have the big screen that is almost filling the width of the room then you're going to be fairly close to the sidewalls just to conform with Dolby's recommendations um, some of the things that we do in the book which we really don't have time to get into here this evening but you know there, there are some places where you you fudge it a little bit mm -hmm. um, to for example if you want to be able to play uh, Oro or DTSX, both of which have a Voice of God channel, they're called either top or overhead, but you know that channel is supposed to be right over the middle of the listening area. Um, if you want to have that effect, and but you don't want to actually put a speaker there for whatever reason, you know maybe it's just impractical. Um, one idea is to scooch the left top middle and the right top middle in a little bit closer than the others so that there may be, as you say, pretty much above the heads of the guy in the left and the right. right. Then you feed the overhead or top channel into both of those and you get a phantom image that you know, gives you the same sort of an effect as you would have had with the Voice of God channel. Hmm. Um, that's, you have a copy of the book chain so you can yeah. check that out. Uh, um, so, so you're still saying to put the top speakers in line with the front left and right rather than having tops slightly inwards from the left and right? Uh, well, what do you mean by slightly? I mean, it depends on the size of the room. and the, But yeah, I, Dolby's recommendation is they, they, they must be, as far as they're concerned, Dolby is you know, fairly strict. Um, as far as Dolby is concerned, they need to be in line with the right. left and right because that's how they designed their mixing rooms. Uh, and if you want to hear what they heard on the dubbing stage, well, then you have to do that. Right, uh, right, right. One of the cool things about, and this is, you know, now this is a pitch for Trinov. <laughs> we have this um, unique technology called uh, remapping. Um, you, you may have seen our three-dimensional microphone, which is has sort of become I iconic. It's, it's really interesting to look at. But there are four mic capsules there arranged in a very specific array. And as we test each loudspeaker with a test signal, we can tell by when the sound passes through that array of microphones exactly where that speaker is within two degrees of azimuth, two degrees of elevation, and one centimeter of distance. So we, we create a three-dimensional map of where your speakers really are. And then the remapping technology makes use of that information to translate from the theory of the soundtrack to the reality of your particular room. So, for example, let's say that 
you do what I suggested a moment ago, and you, you move the left top middle and the right top middle in a little bit closer to the middle of the ceiling, and you have left surround and right surround down at listener, you know, sort of at ear level on, in roughly the same plane. Uh, what remapping does dynamically is it, it knows that the soundtrack wanted the sound to be right there. It also knows that you have a speaker that is inboard of there, it's inside of there, but you also have another speaker that's outside of there and lower on the wall. It'll feed that signal into both of those channels to create a phantom image of the sound coming from where it's supposed to be coming from. Yeah. So we can translate from the theory of the soundtrack to the reality of your actual theater uh, based on our ability to make those measurements and do some really hairy math. Um, again, that's uh, one, of the, one of the benefits of having a software-based platform is that uh, we can do cool stuff like that. We don't have to wait for Texas Instruments or analog devices or somebody else to come up with a cool idea and implement it in, uh, mm -hmm. in a chip.